Moving, moving along and to our, our next uh, accomplished speaker, and David mentioned some of these um, techniques in terms of helping to improve depression. Um, it's along the lines of mindfulness and practicing breathing techniques. Uh, yoga goes hand in hand with that. I'd like to, uh, to welcome and introduce Meg James. Uh, she's discovered yoga and meditation at the age of 16, using these practices to quell her anxious tendencies. After several years, her love affair with the practice uh, ignited a deep passion for holistic well-being and led Meg to take the, the leap from the advertising world into teaching and teaching and completing a 350-hour advanced diploma of yoga teaching with the Australian Yoga Academy. Meg's meditation class, classes focus on using mainstream mindfulness techniques to improve focus, clarity and nutrition. And I guess if you've been to any of the uh, world-leading conferences in, uh, over the past two years, I don't think I, you wouldn't, would not hear a uh, world leader get up and speak about meditation and mindfulness and how they incorporate that into their, into their daily practice. Uh, it's very heavy in, in sporting, sporting fields and that as well now, in, in clubs at, at the elite level, um, but really to help that clarity of thought um, and intuition, meditation and mindfulness and yoga is is out there um, being practiced by some of the, some of the elite um, professionals in, in business. So without further ado, I'll hand over to, to Meg to take you, through, um, take you through her presentation. Thanks. Hi everyone. My name's Meg James and I'm a yoga and meditation teacher at Happy Melon Studios in Armidale. I was first diagnosed with anxiety and depression at the age of 14, two mental illnesses that I've continued to struggle with over the past 12 years. When I first was diagnosed, I felt really lost and overwhelmed and alone. I had absolutely no interest in confronting the feelings that I was dealing with. And so instead I found a myriad of different ways that I could push them aside. I thrashed myself at the gym. I went to boot camp. And I did the kind of yoga that was so intense that it made me exhausted enough to sleep. I placed extreme restrictions on my diet and the food that I ate. And I used this as another mechanism to control and eliminate my feelings. By the time I was 18, I then found excessive, excessive drinking and partying to also numb the feelings that I was experiencing. During these years, I went on and off antidepressants. I saw psychologists, psychiatrists, Chinese doctors, naturopaths, hypnotists, you name it, I tried it all. I continued to search for ways that I could rid myself, alleviate these symptoms of anxiety and depression that I was feeling. And I never had any interest of getting into what was causing me to feel this way. I didn't want to understand why I was having these thought patterns. And I had no interest in trying to break the bad habits that were fueling me to fall back into periods of darkness. Thankfully, in a rare moment of mental quiet, I decided that it was time to learn my way to a calmer state of mind. So I decided to enroll in a yoga teacher training course. And I really underestimated just how beneficial this would be. So over the 12 months that I was studying, I finally found a range of healthy ways that I could start to deal with these feelings that I had spent so long hiding from. Over that period of time, I ended up ditching my strict exercise and diet regime, and I opted for a more gentle approach. Ultimately, this led me to a regular meditation and mindfulness practice. After all of those years of hiding from my feelings, I finally decided that it was time to pay attention to them. 
So basically this is what mindfulness is all about. Paying attention. So when we're being mindful, what we're doing is we're focusing our awareness on the here and now without judgment. So we're allowing our experience to unfold without resisting what's going on, without needing to change anything, without reacting, and without placing any criticisms on what we're experiencing either. Now, I find that it's a lot easier to understand something when we experience it firsthand ourselves. So tonight, I would like to invite you to join me in a really short mindfulness of breath practice. So this is a practice that you can do anywhere, anytime. And all you have to do is pay attention to your breathing. So if you'd like to take a moment to just put aside your notes, anything else that you've got in your hand, find yourself into a nice, comfortable position. The soles of your feet firmly placed against the floor. Sitting nice and tall, spine long, your shoulders back and down. And then just place your hands in your lap. And when you feel ready, gently close down the veil of your eyelids. And just start to feel the gentle rising and falling of your breath. Not needing to control or manipulate your breath in any way. And just seeing if you can notice how it feels in this moment to be breathing. where in your body you feel your breath the most. Notice the texture of your breath. Does it feel fast? Or slow. Smooth or jagged. Is it shallow or deep? Each time your mind wanders off to thoughts, know that simply noticing that you're thinking is an act of mindfulness in itself. And all you have to do is guide your awareness back to the next breath. And when you're ready, start to deepen your breath once again. <clears throat> Finding gentle movement through your toes, your neck, your shoulders. And when you're ready, gently blinking your eyes back open.
So can you see how this simple act of pausing and taking a moment to close your eyes and pay attention to what's happening in the present moment can allow you to start to really get to know your thoughts, sensations in your body and the emotions that you're experiencing too in a really constructive way. So using these practices of meditation and mindfulness were ultimately what led me to start to become aware of the thought patterns and the behavior cycles that were keeping me stuck in periods of darkness. Instead of wrestling with or trying to eliminate the dark feelings that I experienced when I was struggling, like sadness and fear, frustration, anger, I allowed myself to have a different relationship with them. For the first time ever, I made friends with this dark side of myself. I applied the practices of mindfulness to my feelings. And instead of labeling myself as damaged or broken, I embraced myself as I was without judgment. I learned how to investigate my feelings and my thoughts with a sense of gentle curiosity. So becoming aware as each feeling arose, what was I feeling? Where did I feel it in my body? What thoughts went along with these feelings? And were there any behavior patterns that each feeling triggered. Instead of making myself wrong for having these bad feelings, I just allowed myself to be. And in this journey of mindfulness, I was finally able to break free and begin to heal myself and move forward from these habits that were keeping me stuck and journey towards a more harmonious life. So for me, my mindfulness practice comes in the shape of yoga and meditation. But for you, it might be playing footy, or going for a surf, a swim. Maybe your form of mindfulness is being creative, drawing, painting, taking photos. Maybe you like to sing or act or dance. Could be as simple as just going down to the park and playing catch with your dog. So being mindful is basically just paying attention and allowing yourself to be fully present to the here and now. So I've been practicing yoga and meditation for many years now. And I have to tell you that I still struggle with periods of anxiety and depression. I'm not a monk. I'm not enlightened. I have definitely not transcended. <laughs> On particularly bad dates, I have been known to numb my feelings with a tub of salted caramel ice cream or a bottle of Pinot Noir. <laughs> that's okay. Again, I'm allowing myself to have these experiences without judgment. The difference in my life these days is that I now have a range of healthy tools and techniques that I can draw upon when I am spiraling back down into anxiety and depression. My practice has been pivotal in my journey towards uh, a more balanced life and a life that is less inclined to periods of darkness. 
And to really commit myself to moving forward this year, I have dedicated to practicing meditation every single day. So I find that people often wait for a new year or a new month or a new week to start a healthy new habit. But I hope that this talk tonight will encourage you to start practicing mindfulness in your life today. So thank you all so much for your time this evening.